is problem 5-61. In 5-61, you have two shafts made of A992 steel. Each has a diameter of 1 inch and are supported by bearings at A, let's see, A, B, and C, which are allowed free rotation. So these cannot take any torque here. Um, if the support at D is fixed, determine the angle of twist. Okay. The critical thing here, excuse me, we're going to find the angle of twist at B. So we're looking to find out how much twist is at B. So basically, you're trying to find out how much does the shaft rotate around this axis. All you're trying to do. All right. So the, what you want to do is think about this shaft here because this shaft here is fixed. So what's taking place here? And let's pretend this this part wasn't even here. This was gone. You apply 80 pounds to this one. This would immediately turn back and go back immediately at 80. That'd be 80 foot-pounds. That's only if this was not here. So you could get twist a lot between here and here, up to here, and then that angle would just continue all the way around down to here if you had no other forces being applied to the shaft. But in this case, that's that's not true because this one is creating a a torque that's going this way. So it's going to try to force this one to go back up this way. So, what you want to do on this one first is to try to find out how much force or is this gear right here placing on this one. All right, so to do that, all you're going to do is look and see how much uh, torque has been applied. We got 40 pounds times feet. So we're going to look directly in like this at the shaft and look at this gear here. I'll do it with circles. So we got a circle here coming in, and then we got a larger circle coming here like this. So this large circle represents this gear, the small circle represents this one. All right, this small one is turning at 80 pounds by 80 pound feet, or 80 foot pounds this way. So what it does is causing a force on this one, trying to force it back up. So what we want to do is try to find out what this force is that it's causing going back up. All right, to do that, all we have to do is say 40 feet pounds is equal to F times the distance from here to here in feet. This, is, this one has a radius of 4. So we can multiply that by 4 inches divided by 12 inches because we know that's the same thing as, um, and then multiply that by feet. What happens there would be the um, inches cancel out. So we just did a ratio to find how many feet that would be. So to find this force, all we have to do is take 40 and divide it by 4 twelfths. When we do that, that gives me 120 pounds. So this force has got to be 120 pounds. So now we'll just draw a free by diagram of just what this guy, this uh, shaft looks like. Let's be a little rough, but let's see if we can do this. Let me do it with a straight line here. So this is the shaft coming down here. I have 80 being applied here, so I'll take 80 around this way. Pounds, feet, or foot pounds, either one. Now I have 120 being applied here. It has a moment arm of 6, so that's going to cause a torque to go back this way of 120 times 0.5 feet, or 60. Foot pounds, or again pounds feet. Okay, so this, but this, this is supported here. So I got 80 coming this way. I got 60 coming this way. Well, this has to resist that. So this one has to turn back and go back this way. A value of 20 foot pounds. Okay, so now what we can do? Let's scroll down here. Give yourself a little bit of space. We're going to talk about how much torque is being applied along the shaft. All we have to do is draw a straight line here. Look into the side. 
So what I'll have, I'll have 20 going this way. So what I can do, easy way to think about this, I come on, and I got 20 here. And then once I get to this point, I'm gonna go down 80. So it'll give me 60 over to here. And I go back up. So what we can do is make this, since it's going this way, we'll, we'll use traditional uh, sign convention. This would be going negative this way. And this would be going positive this way. This would be positive uh, 60. And this would be negative 20. All right, so what we can find out is how much twist this beam is having between uh, here and this end. If we do that, then this is how much this it's going to twist this this uh, or make this thing rotate around B, or how much twist we'd have around B. All right, so we go back to the equation for angular twist. The equation for angular twist is theta is going to equal to T L over J G. Where this is the um, shear rigidity, and this is the polar moment inertia, and this is L, the length of the shaft where this torque is being applied, and this is the torque values. So we'll go ahead and put our equal sign in. Now the one thing you have to be careful with is go ahead and put your units in here. So we'll go minus 20 times foot pounds. But now everything else is in inches, so we need to convert this feet to uh, inches. So we'll multiply that by 12 inches over one foot. Feet cancel out here. We go ahead and measure it by the length of where the 20 is occurring. The 20 is occurring al along a length of 10 inches. And then we divide it by a polar moment inertia, which is pi over 2 times the radius to the fourth power. And this has a radius of 0 0.5. And again, the G value is something that's unique to the A992 steel. And if you look that up in a table, I believe it's 11 times 10 to the sixth. Now we'll come to the next one. We do plus 60. I won't do all this unit conversion again. We're just going to go ahead and multiply that by 12. And then we're going to multiply it by the length of that, where that 60 is occurring. That 60 is occurring over a length of 30. Divide that by pi over 2 times the um, radius to the fourth power and then times 11 times 10 to the sixth. I'll put all my parentheses in here, like this and like this. And now if you run that value, this gives us a value of 0 0.01778 radians. Since we got a positive value here, and we said anything that goes this way would be positive in this particular this picture um, of this particular problem, that means it's going to go back up this way. So now what you have to do is think about um, what's that going to do when you get down to here. Now you cannot say that this is just this one's also going to be the same angular. You just can't do it. You got what you have to do here is you have to make a ratio between the radiuses. So, I'll draw the pictures again. A small one, got a large one here. Like this. Now you can think to, your, think to yourself, if this one's going to twist this way, of 0.1778 radians. What is this one going to do 
obviously this one's going to want to twist back the other way. So what you can do is you can just ratio uh, the difference between the radiuses. This has a radius of 6. This one I believe had a radius of 4. So you can just set this problem up as 0.1778 times its radius must equal to this one's radius 4 times its angular root uh, its angular twist we'll call it just a we'll call it let's go back and call it, we'll call it um, AB meaning shaft AB so what I have to do is recalculate this that gives me 0.1778 times 6 I divide that by 4 and that gives me a value of 0 0.02667 radians if we convert that to degrees, that would be approximately 1.53 degrees. Now, that's how much twist you're going to get right around here. Now, this is not tied, okay? This is free to rotate. So the, um, the angular twist at B would be exactly the same as the angular twist here. So your final answer here would be 153 degrees. Okay, my right, best of luck with this problem.